one of the talk station will be uh, you have to mark port sites for laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So, uh, can you name the ports for cholecystectomy? Exactly. Uh, mid clavicular port. Port in mid clavicular line, and this is port in anterior axillary line. So, what are uses of these ports? You insert telescope through umbilical port. You insert working instrument from epigastric and mid clavicular line port and a grasper is inserted through anterior axillary port to retract gallbladder. So the next question will be what are the sizes of these ports? The sizes are uh, the umbilic umbilical port may be a 5 or 10 millimeter epigastric port from which we retrieve gallbladder is usually of 10 millimeter port and mid clavicular line and anterior axillary line ports are of 5 millimeter size. Um, there will be two or three stations for a short case and short case among many short cases one may be examination of an ulcer. So how, how will you examine? Introduction, consent, exposure and uh, you start inspecting the ulcer and in, and while inspecting the ulcer you will see the ulcer itself the surrounding area of the ulcer the other parts of the limb the whole limb and you will compare the limb with the normal limb and besides examination of ulcer and surrounding skin there are two additional things which you have to examine and these are distal neurovascular status and proximal I mean inguinal lymph adenopathy in this case. In the ulcer examination starts from from periphery to center you will see the surrounding area either it is hyperpigmented or hypopigmented or there are other scars or ulcers and, and nodules then the margins, margins may be of different type, everted, inverted, rolled, undermined in different conditions. Then comes the, this visible part of the ulcer which is called floor of the ulcer. This is not the base of the ulcer. The floor lies on the base, floor of ulcer lies on the base which is not visible and then you will comment on the floor of the ulcer it, it contains granulation tissue it contains some part of slough it contains uh, a little discharge then uh, is it uh, uh, foul smelling what is the color of discharge is it pus or serosanguineous fluid so you will comment on floor and its discharge then you will uh, feel this is inspection then then you will feel the surrounding skin is it indurated, hard, tough and uh, then uh, you will feel temperature of surrounding skin. Temperature here and temperature here, whether this temperature is raised or not. Then palpation, put on a sterile glove, you feel the floor and base of the ulcer. So this is the examination of ulcer proper, then you will have to check Dorsalis pedis artery, artery, posterior tibial artery, and then you will have to examine inguinal lymph nodes. So this is short case uh, in a talk station. The, the first question will will be, what is this X-ray? What is this X-ray? What means? Is it a plain X-ray or is is it a contrast? And then you have to describe the area exposed in the X-ray. So this is plain x-ray showing lower end of femur and upper third or upper half of the tibia. So most likely a POP cast has been applied. The second question is what are your findings? So you can see partial displacement and an oblique fracture in the upper third of tibia. So your findings are uh, uh, an oblique fracture 
at the upper third of tibia right and the third question will be how will you manage there will there is initial management of fracture which you know pain relief stabilization hemodynamic instability correction general management of the patient so the, the specific emergency management is either you can uh, splint it by pop cast what are the options for definitive management of this fracture definitive management may be conservative may be operative conservative uh, immobilization and rest and definitive management is open reduction and internal fixation and in fixation we have different options screws plates nails wires so here you apply plate so open reduction internal fixation with plating of tibia this is definitive management you will be shown a picture and then you you will be asked a few questions so what are the findings 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 not diagnosis what are the findings so this is there is color change this is normal healthy gut this is uh, gut with color change the mesentery of the gut has hemorrhage in it this is blackened and this is grayish in color so these are findings what is your diagnosis bowel infarction question number 2 yes gangrene of the gut this gangrene of the gut what are the causes of gangrene of the gut diabetes no so mesenteric so ischemia valvulus internal herniation bands adhesions right how what are the surgical principles of management resection and yes you can't leave this gut inside the abdominal cavity what number principle number 1 you have to resect the diseased gut leaving behind the health, healthy margins principle number 2 if there is no gross intra abdominal spillage or contamination then you can primarily anastomose those two ends principle number 3 of operative treatment if you find there is gross contamination of peritoneal cavity and you think and you fear that the anastomosis you have done will not work because of infection then you take both hands out of the abdominal cavity and make double barrel ileostomy ileost you will exteriorize both the ends of the ileum question will be what is this image contrast yes contrast but what area is exposed biliary tree biliary tree that's great biliary tree and from where is the contrast injected that is important you have to yeah you can see this tube this tube is going out of the body if you can concentrate here it has a limb like this mm -hmm. right so it makes a t tube t tube so this is this in what is this investigation called uh, a t tube cholangiogram t tube cholangiogram and what are the findings what area has been uh, opacified the common bile duct the right hepatic duct the left hepatic hepatic duct and in the, then intrahepatic biliary channels this is contrast here you you can see is a filling defect and then contrast is going down into this irregular part which is duodenum so this is suspicious area this may be a retained stone these these are the findings this is a little bit dilatation of extra hepatic bilirubin and there is a suspicious radio opaque shadow that may be a 
that may be a stone. 